First off, my camera doesn't have the best microphone, so I've upgraded it to a Rode Video Micro. Do you think that's better? We'll see. So what I'm working on is, if you read the description of this video, a cot, like miniature bed, portable bed, uh, something or other, for camping or guests or whatever so I'm starting off with this piece of plywood it was 30 bucks from Home Depot but it's interesting because it's a uh, six core three quarter inch and the the top ply is like really nice so I figure this would be great for all sorts of woodworking projects uh, first I got to carry it to the basement And remember, there's no more important safety rule than to wear these safety glasses, which is pretty damn important for me because I spent $5,000 on LASIK eye surgery, so I need them. First, I have to straighten up this edge because it's the cut edge that I use to make this guy. And then after that, I'll cut a six inch strip and that'll form four legs and one end. The one end will be 32.44 inches long and the legs will be 15 and a half inches long. Well, long isn't really a, a good descriptor of it, but you'll see. Oh, I forgot. These really have to be on the, the outboard edge to clear the motor. That's the, the straight working edge. And then here I have, yeah, it's a 16th. So if I want six, I do six and a 16th. And then I put it on that line. Next up, the, the bed platform is going to sit on rails, and the rails are going to be, let's see, I have four inch high rails, and I want an inch and a half of the mattress protruding, and it's a three inch mattress. So four inches minus an inch and a half is two and a half minus the thickness of this, 23, 30 seconds, but I'm not going to, I'm three quarter. So that's an inch and three quarter plus a sixteenth and that'll do the rails or not the rails but the oh yes I still need to do the rails themselves hey, what am I thinking man I got um, most of the big pieces ripped, and including it'll be like the you know box frame sort of type thing. Uh, but I'm gonna need at least one more of these panels because I only have three. Um, apparently, one sheet of plywood is not quite enough. So now I'm gonna cut down these guys into the shorter component lengths. So this will be the legs. Um, I don't have a whole lot of space here in my shop. You know, I can't stick eight in, eight feet off that way and I can't st stick eight feet off that way. So I have to like cut two at once and then cut them shorter. So 15 and a half each. So 31 and a quarter. I'll cut this to break it to a smaller size.
so I'm assembling the rails. Uh, these thinner bits are what, oh look at that, an overlap. So these thinner bits are what the large boards are going to rest on. And these are going to get attached to the rails like such. So I gotta spread some glue to these. And I got these construction screws to put together. Because I'm dealing with pine here, I want something with a lot of holding force. And those have a, a nice fat head, so things won't go anywhere. Well, this, uh, this glue spreader is from Rockler. came with a kit. came with a, a little brush, a silicone brush, and this is silicone, and then a, a glue tray that's not silicone, and the glue sticks to it. So that's poor design, Rockler. What are you thinking? I seem to have cut myself somewhere. So I can let the glue tack up on these a little bit and then scrape it out. Now moving on to the legs, this requires a little bit of layout. Uh, so this will be the front face of it and the, the end is going to screw on here and I'm going to cut out uh, a radius and then this will go to four inches which is the same as the rails, same as the rails I was just gluing up. So I need to find something with a diameter of about four inches. This biscuit cap will do, it's uh, a little over three and a half inches. So, I want, want the legs to be about four inches by four inches. And this is the longer bit, the ends are gonna screw on here. With like, with screws going through there. So, any forces in this direction are directly held by this on the floor. Or ground or dirt or whatever. So this is four inches here, and I'm gonna make a template, and then use, cut it out, sand it, and then use it to trace the rest of them. And I want this at two inches, there and there. Square, what is this? This is uh, brown and sharp, and this is a brown and sharp. Tangent, tangent. Cut an arc. So I gotta remove this. I could use the trick to uh, attach all these together, but my bandsaw doesn't have enough power for that. Okay, so I have footboard and headboard cut out, sanded, and I got my ends here, which will go on, well, not ends, but they're the rail brackets will get screwed onto the end there. And then I'm gonna have the longer rails are gonna sit on the inside and I have quarter 20 um, T-nuts that'll go on the inside of the rails and screw those on with quarter 20 Phillips from the outside. And then to locate and lock everything in place like structurally, I have a dowel, which I'm gonna slice into little bits. So then the little bits would stick in, in two places and that will give it a lot of uh, racking strength. And now I made these kind of long, which is, um, it's inspiration from Matthias Wandel, however you pronounce his name, uh, that one workbench video that he did, because he wanted like racking strength with his legs. So he made extensions on the legs, so you get a lot wider spacing for your attachment points. Now, another reason why I did that, besides the strength, is that I can make the rails not 75 inches, which is what the mattress is, but something more like 68 inches or 66 inches, which will fit in the car a lot better than 75 inches, let me tell you. Uh, so it's a multifold reasoning. Now I just gotta put it all together. Now I am gonna pre-drill these holes because that's how you get splitsville in plywood. I'm trying to screw into the end of plywood, just splits right on here.
welcome back it's another day I ran out of battery power recording the last stuff last night so uh, I skipped some stuff on this video all I did was mount mount the rails um, to these guys well I clamped them in place drilled all the holes then I inserted my T-nuts and I used a, uh, a C-clamp to press those in firmly. And now I'm to the point where I need to take my dowel here and fit it into the holes. Now I'm gonna do <clears throat> still haven't decided which side gets the fixed end. Um, I want to say that I'll make these have the fixed end so that these rails, when you're loading them, you can just you know slide them in and out, whatever, and the dowels aren't going to be in your way. But if they're sticking on the inside here, that's not going to matter so much. The only problem I have right now is I have the holes drilled. It's an inch and a quarter dowel, inch and a quarter holes, but the dowel's a little bit too big, so I need to sand down half of the thickness and then slice them off so that they all fit in the hole. Much better. So I just have to do that eight more times. Now all of these guys need to be glued in to the inside here with the, the part I sanded down facing to the inside. But I think before I put the glue on, I should chamfer these a little bit so that I can get them in. I cut these rails the full length um, because I didn't really know where to cut them off with respect to where I wanted to put the dowels. So now that the dowels are in place, I'll cut the rails off like a half inch past the dowel. And that should give me plenty of strength. And because this is all plywood, I'm not worried about splitting unless it's end grain. Now I can assemble the bed frame. And some of you might be asking, why, why build such a large elaborate bed for camping. Well, I'm a big guy. I'm like 310 pounds, six foot something, not quite six one. I sweat a lot. And if I use an air mattress, I just, I wake up one side of me sweaty, the other side of me cold. And this will allow me to have a, a nice uh, breathable bottom. So the screws, all they do is hold the rails in place and the dowels are the ones that are actually like the structural bit. Now, I don't have the mattress here, but it should fit 75 inches by 31 inches. But we'll see if I fit. Pretty 
close. I guess the only problem is that the ends aren't quite like supported. But I think I can take care of that with a few blocks glued on the end. I was actually laying in it backwards. I I made this end the headboard end. At least I call it a headboard because you don't want your pillow to like walk away from you while you're sleeping. And just to prove how strong it is, again, I'm 310 pounds, and I'm bouncing up and down on it, probably like a four to 500 pound impulse, I'm guessing. It's taking that no problem. And how does it pack, you ask? Well, we have a Subaru out back, and I put all of the bed baseboards underneath the cooler on the floor of the car, which actually makes it better because it's like level front to back almost. The long rails, they fit on the side. You know, here's the rails. And then those I just put around the tent. So ultimately it takes up the square footage of the component parts and that's it. It's quite space efficient if you know what you're doing. Here I am now in the campground with the bed and I've slept on it for two nights now. And here's what I have to say about it. Uh, you know, a few comments, suggestions, improvements, if you want to do this by yourself. Uh, first off, these screws that I put in are only an inch and a quarter, which isn't quite long enough to grab end grains, so they should really be longer. Alternatively, you could use um, piano hinges. So then these, these end pieces are hinged and then, well, either foot or headboard can fold flat. So that's one option. Uh, the legs, they're an okay length. They could maybe be a little bit longer. And I should also add some sort of like, maybe water protection if any water does get in the tent because well, that never happens, right? Or like uh, adjuster blocks that are waterproof. So I could like adjust the bed for level where it is and at the same time keep it from getting wet. I haven't painted this yet, but I do intend to paint it. Uh, next up. The only major problem I had with this bed while sleeping in it is that this center board right under my butt would fall out at about 5 a.m. So what I've done is hook up a tie strap just there on the edge hooked around there and this is enough to keep it together so now it won't uh, separate these gaps in the boards um, when I was cutting out all the wood I kind of screwed up a few cuts and I don't have quite enough wood to fill all the gaps, so I'd like to get another piece of wood and fill all the gaps. And then secondarily with that, I haven't had any like wet, sweaty back moisture issues, um, but once I close up the gaps, I could have that, so I'd like to drill a bunch of like one inch holes, just pepper all these boards with holes. Uh, strength wise, no issues. A few minor other comments. The mattress that I got isn't quite the advertised size, but it works. It's three inches. It could be a little bit thicker. It's not memory foam, but that's okay. <coughs> the sideboards could be a little bit shorter, because when I'm sleeping, my, my leg will compress this, and then I'll have a hard boards in my side. Uh, same for the foot. My feet still sometimes hang off the end of this bed because I'm kind of tall. 
and the headboard here to keep the pillow in place. That worked pretty good, but it could probably be another inch or two higher. It's like 80 degrees and hot during the middle of the day here, but at night it works out to be pretty nice. I'm at Chincoteague Island. Uh, yeah, I like this bed. I do recommend that other people build it. And of course, if you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> Fun update for you guys. Uh, remember when I was saying that I wanted to paint it or something to prepare for water? Well, this campsite, like the entire campgrounds, is kind of wet. Yeah, there's an inch of water under a tent, like two inches outside, so I just, uh, I stuck the bed on some pieces of wood, firewood for now, and that'll keep the feet dry. Now I just have to try to keep all my uh, sheets on the bed.